In Ukraine it's like a hell. <laughs> we don't know what to do. Do prove that you are with us. Do prove you will not let us go. The Ukrainian ambassador said if Ukraine does not survive, international peace will not survive. A Ukrainian media outlet is quoting an advisor to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky saying that Kiev wants an immediate ceasefire and a full Russian withdrawal, including Russian forces in Crimea. These face-to-face -face talks are the first since Russia invaded five days ago. We Звертаємось до Європейського Союзу щодо невідкладного приєднання України за новою спеціальною процедурою. At the further request of Ukraine and in coordination with NATO allies, we are announcing today that we are providing even more lethal aid to Ukraine and will be sending 100 Carl Gustav anti-tank weapon systems and 2,000 rockets. For Ukrainian nationals in Canada, we know that you can't go home right now. So we've taken steps to make it easier for you to stay. We've made the decision to extend temporary status and issue open work permits to Ukrainian visitors, workers and students who are already in Canada. The rocket struck the main uh, administrative building in Kharkiv, which is two kilometers from where I live, so in a walking distance from my home. Volodymyr Zelensky is calling it war crimes because also apartment buildings were struck. A Russian missile hit the Kiev TV tower, or right next to it. Uh, at least five people were killed. I've lost count at the number of explosions. They're getting closer and they're definitely getting more intense. New satellite photos give us a better look at the size of the Russian force heading for the city. The convoy of armored vehicles is estimated to be more than 60 kilometers long. No shops are working for buying food or something. Like that. It's like a hell. <laughs> we don't know what to do. The European Union is going to be much stronger with us, so that's for sure. Without you, Ukraine is going to be lonely, lonesome. We have proven our strength. Inside the European Parliament, draped in Ukraine's colours, a long-standing ovation for the country's president. Canada's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Melanie Jolie, staged a walkout as a pre-recorded video message from Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov played out. Minister Lavrov uh, was being broadcasted uh, and giving his version, uh, which is false, about what is happening in Ukraine. And so that's why we wanted to show a very strong stance uh, together. Attack on Kharkiv has residents scrambling to flee. Desperation and panic, that is clearly evident at the city's train station. I hope all this violence and cruelness ends soon. Not everyone at the borders is saying that they're being treated equally. Foreign students are finding escape especially hard. Mostly they would, they would consider white people first, white people first. They were like, you have to give us money because this is, this is, not, this is not for free for you because you are foreign. In favor, 141, against five, abstentions, 35. The Ukrainian ambassador said if Ukraine does not survive, international peace will not survive. The UN General Assembly resolution is, is essentially the formal expression of the will or opinion of the United Nations. So if this is not uh, legally binding, the Security Council is the only body within the UN that can do that. What's the point of it? 
I'm really scared, but you know, I'm just hoping uh, for the best. We've also heard from Alexei Navalny, the jailed opposition activist. He's put a, a tweet out, uh, me a message on social media, uh, calling for there to be daily protests against this invasion, not just in Russia, but also in Belarus and around the world. I'm not Ukrainian, but I'm human. And I feel like it's just the right thing to do. He has no military experience, no personal ties to the country, but plans to go to Ukraine. I think it's our responsibility, my responsibility to help those people. If that means sacrificing blood or life to give them that, then I absolutely think that's uh, what I would do. Canada is ready to welcome Ukrainians fleeing Vladimir Putin's war, and there is no limit to the number of applications that we are going to be willing to accept. Sanctions have struck every aspect of the Russian economy. Russia and Belarus will be subject to a tariff of 35% on their exports to Canada. Things like the SWIFT international payment system, uh, cutting many Russian banks out of that uh, international payment system. We're also seeing uh, private companies, big corporations, voting with their feet and really heading for the exit door. You just see one by one, day by day, all these things kind of happening as the world community grapples with how to send a message to Russia economically, diplomatically, pulling out everything they can. To hold Vladimir Putin to account, to make sure that he understands that this was a terrible mistake for which he and the Russian people will pay. Those negotiations have now ended without any agreement on a ceasefire, but an agreement to protect civilians. Both sides have agreed to a humanitarian corridor so that people can escape besieged neighborhoods, cities, and get to places where they want to be. The Russian military says its forces have captured the strategic Black Sea port of Kherson in southern Ukraine. Ukrainian officials in the city today confirmed that Russian units have taken over the local government headquarters. Unfortunately, we are under the control of Russian troops and they gave us their set of rules that we need to follow and they are very strict. The Russians appear close to capturing another strategic port. The city of Mariupol is under siege and heavy bombardment. 26 hours, 26 hours they are destroying our city. Uh, so from all the weapons. That's a strategic city on the Black Sea. They have cut off water. People cannot uh, get enough to eat. They cannot get medications. Um, satellite communications are cut. There is no internet. And that the city has been hit by um, whatever Russia could throw at them. Russian troops have seized the biggest nuclear power plant in Europe. Shelling overnight sparked a fire. Six reactors at the plant were not affected at all, and that there has been no release of radioactive material. The situation is naturally, continues to be extremely uh, tense and, and challenging. NATO is not seeking a war with Russia. We are not part of this conflict. And we have a responsibility to ensure it does not escalate and spread beyond Ukraine. 
The country's parliament passed new legislation today with punishments for spreading what it calls fake news about its military. What it says basically is, this, is that if you are found guilty of spreading what the Russian authorities deem to be fake news about the country's armed forces, then you could face a pretty steep fine or even a prison sentence of up to 15 years.